Welcome back, everyone. Well, as you know, I really love politics. I've, I've followed it my whole life. Elections matter. And uh, as a result of that, as you know, we brought a bunch of candidates in to talk about who they are and why they would like your vote. Somebody that really impressed us is my guest, Tedra Cobb. And she's running on the Democratic ticket. The primary is coming up Tuesday. We asked her to come back again so uh, we could talk about the election, talk about the issues and her priorities. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, uh, you were in a couple months ago. Uh, you still, how are your shoes? You've been, they're, they're, they're worn out. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, you know what question I love to ask, Tedra, is what are you finding out? It's one thing what we think about. Right. The most important thing is what the electorate thinks mm -hmm. about. What are you finding out there? I'm finding that people say to me, the district is so huge, people's issues must be different mm -hmm. throughout the district. Yeah. And what I'm finding is that people are facing the same issues throughout the district, mm -hmm. that they are struggling with health care costs. They're struggling with prescription drug costs. They're worried about sending their children to college. Farmers are worried about farming, and that's throughout the district. The tourism industry, uh, broadband and cell coverage, that, those struggles are shared throughout the whole region. And I think that's what I'm hearing, is that this is a region and we actually share similar challenges and struggles, as well as opportunities. Yeah, sure. Now, uh, I remember in our first interview, Healthcare was very important to you. Yeah. Um, also, Tedra, uh, you've lived in this area for 30 some years, you told me? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. And was also a county legislator for a number of years. And, uh, you know, when you have that kind of in the trenches, let's say, experience, living here and also working here in public service, you do really learn a lot about your constituents, don't you? Yeah. So for me, you know, I've seen healthcare as a healthcare provider. Yes. But also as an educator, I did AIDS education throughout the 90s. Mm. I started a community health agency. This is before the Affordable Care Act. So I was providing, writing federal grants and state grants to provide health care to people who were uninsured a long time ago. That agency is still around, employing 13 people. Um, and during my tenure there, I ran for office and I was elected as a county legislator. I was reelected for a second term, so I served eight years. And so that experience is why I'm running in many ways, because I know what good representation is like, but I also know firsthand the struggles that people in this region are facing. Uh, is it true that the second time you ran, you ran, uh, no one ran against you? You ran unopposed. You're right. All right, well, there's, there, there's, uh, there's kind of proof there for what I'm what, saying. What it means you know? when you're unopposed <laughs> is that you're doing the job That's you said exactly you would right. do. That's exactly right, I know. Um, there are a couple of national issues that really do affect the North country, um, immigration and trade. Uh, let's talk about both of those for a second. Uh, immigration, talk to me. Okay, so looking at the region again, we have immigration that touches many different sectors of our economy, education, healthcare, mm -hmm. tourism, and farming. Mm -hmm. And we need an immigration policy, an overarching policy that will help us in those different sectors. And this Congress has been inactive. They've not done anything. Yes, we can look at the chaos that is happening and all of our hearts are breaking about what's happening on the southern border. But I live in Canton on the northern border and we go across the bridge to Canada every day. Right. And people come into the United States every day to work uh, in the United States. So, you know, I think we need to remember the impact of immigration throughout this district on those economic sectors um, and also on our lives daily. Yes, got you. Um, trade, go. Again, you know, right. in, uh, the trade policies that, the, you know, this administration now is, I would say, ruining our relationship and are standing in the world, and the impact will negatively affect us. Let's look at maple syrup, just something, you know, mm -hmm. we have better maple syrup than Vermont, by the way. <laughs> but what I wanna say here is this, I called a maple producer uh, in, in my region, in St. Lawrence County, and I said, how will these tariffs affect you? And what he said is, it will trickle down because he collects his own maple syrup, but he also is a collector of other people's maple syrup, and then it's shipped to New Hampshire. They ship it worldwide, worldwide right, sure. and so it will trickle down and have an impact on our maple producers. So mm -hmm. our farming community clearly is having an impact. And so, um, you know, the, the, the relationship that we have
have in the world and our standing in the world matters. Mm -hmm. Relationships take years to build, but they take minutes to destroy. Boy, and we need to true. think about that. Well, hence elections matter. Hence you know, elections one, matter. One of the things that I'd like to uh, talk about, you know, a lot of times we feel, uh, oh, our vote doesn't count, you know. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference which party controls Congress. And then you remember our founding fathers. Right. Three equal, separate branches of government. So who we elect to Congress does matter. It matters. We need a balance. We need the balance of powers. And so right now, you know, we can look at what's happening in Congress. We can see that they're passing legislation in the middle of the night with chicken scratch, with no hearings. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see that there are good, uh, good uh, bills that are sitting in committees that are not being allowed out of committees. And Paul Tonko has the Scientific Integrity Act sitting in a committee. So what we have is an imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, elections matter. The balance of powers matters. And I believe that now, more than any other time, does it matter. I've got you. All right. The um, primary is on Tuesday. Uh, you've got a couple of more days to see if you can wear those shoes out for sure. Um, but just trying to give me a sense of what would you like to accomplish between now and Tuesday? Well, to me, it's reaching out to all of those people. I have teams of volunteers. We now actually have 900 volunteers. Um, and we keep track of them and we cultivate them and we're asking them, please reach out to other people. We're, we, our goal is to reach out to as many people in this district and let them know who I am, why I'm running, and why this election matters. And I'll be doing the same thing. And the best thing when I call people is I say, hello, this is Tedra. And there's a pause and they think it's a robocall. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, no, no, this is Tedra. Mm -hmm. And I think the reality for me and what I've done from the beginning is reaching out and reaching out to people and creating those relationships because it's not just about getting elected. Mm -hmm. It's about serving once you're elected. And that's the ultimate goal. Boy, you've got it. Well, well said. Well, you can tell why people think so much of you. you. Uh, very impressive endorsements, by the way. Uh, encourage you to go to Tedra's website, find out more about it. And above all, get out on Tuesday and vote. Yes. Well, thank you very much and best of luck to you in the election. Thank you. You're quite welcome. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com. <laughs>